What's up, y'all? Welcome to the video. Today, um, I have my iPad Pro right here. Uh, recently just transitioned to iPad music production. Huge leap because I usually was on my, my MacBook doing all my work uh, on Logic Pro. But the fact that they put Logic Pro on the iPads kind of changed everything. So <laughs> I'm working that out. I just bought a whole bunch of plugins. So we're gonna kind of just dive and see what I've been doing, how I've been making basically the same great quality on this thing. Anyways, let's hop right into the video. Let's go. Somebody is mowing their lawn. So I apologize in advance if that's what you hear in the background. So I'm actually gonna turn these down and you guys are gonna hear uh, like basically what I created. This is what I did. I ended up going to Splice right here. I forget which uh, place I found it from. I just searched up like pop or R&B sounds and this is what I got. Right, and then I got that and my piano loving self heard a nice piano under this kind of creating like a nice ambient sound so let's just hear it so you can hear what i'm what i mean by that yeah so we grounded it and then obviously the bass is really what glues everything together, so hear this. Dang, that's good. Yeah, this is literally a stock plugin. I don't remember what I did. I think I went to the patches here. Yeah, went to the patches here. Uh, to the instrument patches and I just looked up bass and then I found uh, a synth bass that was very big it was just a, a just had a powerful sound and then what I did was I went to the EQ because this is how it actually sounded without the EQ and it had that and I didn't want to get those high frequencies and I just really just wanted the low end of that bass so I put the I forget what these are called high shell high pass filter I don't know. Anyways, I put that and I brought it down and I got those frequencies um, from the 20, 10, 3K, 1K, kind of down towards the 500. Um, took all those out because I, I felt like that sounded much better for the song and the feeling that I was going for. So that's pretty much bare bones what I have in this section of the song. Now let me go into the vocals so y'all can hear what I'm talking about, about how the fact that I can make basically the same quality vocal that I have in my presets on my laptop. It's blowing my mind right now how accurate and just how good I can make this sound. So here it is. Understood. You had to try to tell me I like I was no good. Why did you leave me on my own? Was I no good? I put in work to the bone, still was no good. Go and tell me that I was another one. I'm just another one. I'm just another one. And I don't mean nothing to you. Nothing to you. Yo, these vocals are crazy. You know what's blowing my mind right now? I'm looking on YouTube and I don't see anybody really going over any vocals like in depth and talking about like how they're able to make music production but also specifically for vocals on the iPad. Let's tap in. So um, basically what I have here, this is all my plugins that I have right now. I, as you can see, I pretty much have Fab Filter throughout this whole thing. Right now on the App Store, Fab Filter is probably some of the best plugins you could get. All their plugins, um, their library is it's pretty sick. It's pretty. It's probably top of the line. Nobody else is like topping them right now. So I have a gate, a noise gate. Then I have a de-esser, and this de-esser is great. I'm not gonna go into all of the parameters and the things that I did 
here, maybe in a separate video if that's something you're interested in. And after I did the de I went and put a compressor on it. That made my voice completely revived. Um, so what we're gonna do is I'm actually gonna solo this right now so you can hear the difference between the compression and not compression. Or this is no compression. Another one, I'm just another one. Then with compression. Another one, I'm just another one. I'm just another one. It Controlled the entire thing. Now it didn't take away from too much of the dynamic range, but what it did is it really put it, that joint in the pocket. Really enjoy these plugins, man. They're doing a great job. Local Tune Pro. Um, you pull this thing up, man, and you kind of have everything that you would have on Waves real time right here. Same thing. So I can change the key if I want to change the key or whatever. The scale. And the scales are very they're accurate. And this plugin was literally seven bucks. So I'm telling you, this is probably one of the best things that I bought for this because I use Auto Tune slightly on all my vocals. I also use Wider by Polyverse, the Affected Mushroom Company. They are just, probably have become one of my favorite plugins. I use this on all my vocals. I sometimes use it on some of my pianos and things like that to get the stereo width just a little bit wider. And it really has been doing, it's been doing me a great service. I really love these plugins a lot. And then lastly, I have a, a EQ on my channel, pretty much how I, mix my vocal a little bit on there and i have some sends now in these sends i have my reverb which is the pro r reverb from fab filter of course and then my delay is timeless three by fab filter big surprise right anyways these are all of the plugins that i use and i think that this is really something special try it out for yourself um i'm sure you would love it um, especially if you're a pop, you're an R&B artist, you love um, to get just a little bit of that crisp sound. And uh, I found that this has been working best for me to emulate the sound that I would get on this laptop right here on my, on my iPad. So anyways, let's dive in a little bit further. So there's another section here and I wanna show you the plugin I use to bring these drums to life. But I first want you to hear it, this section. Let's go. That was sick. Now, here's how these drums sounded beforehand. I'm gonna solo them, and I really want y'all to hear this because I was blown away by this plugin and I never bought it on my, my MacBook. And now I'm thinking, man, I should have done that on some of my drums for previous productions that I did. But hear, these, hear how these drums sound without this plugin. <laughs> telling you this plugin is pretty sick so um this was pretty much that section if you guys also if you guys like the way that i customize this thing also i like to put the track colors here too um but this is how i did it so i pressed these three dots here went to customize track header and then i um put the input monitoring and uh, i have my solos here and i also put the track um, colors activated i think everything else is already activated before stock by default um, but these are parameters that i press and i activate because i like to see these things i love the color coding and all that so this is the next section here and uh, i really like this section a lot because it just kind of dynamically changes and, and that's what i'm looking for a lot when i'm producing something i want it to feel like it's going different places and that it's gradually growing growing and getting bigger moments you know so this is what this sounds like and then i'll strip it down and tell you guys all the different things that i did so yeah sick right um so obviously I kept that same loop that I have from the beginning, got the same bass line, but these are the two things that I added next. And this is basically just a lead 
I forget what I did. I think I took a stock lead from somewhere and then, oh no, 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 no. I used this one uh, plugin called Xeon and it was free on the iPad. I, it blows my mind how many free plugins you could get that have super high quality sound. I bounced it out and this is what it sounds like now. Right, and then what I did is I did Pro, um, Pro Q3, which is basically their Fab Filters EQing um, plugin. And it's, <laughs> this thing is crazy. I still have not even scratched the surface to how much you could do on this one. It's, it has so many different parameters. And then what I did is I went to that same plugin, the Xeon, and I added this, literally just two chords, emphasizing the first chord and then emphasizing, uh, I think, the third chord. What I found about this is that it just made it feel bigger. It almost gave just, I don't know, man. Sometimes it's a feeling more than it has anything technical to do with it. And uh, I, this one just felt right, you know what I mean? So here's how it sounded all together. Right, sick. And yeah, that's pretty much the whole thing. So I'm, like I said, I created this strictly on the freaking iPad. Now, yes, I got my plugins and I got all these things that I invested in and I have so many baby audio sound toys plugins and uh, you know, my Echo Boy, my Alter Boy, all these different plugins in here that I just, you know, man, I freaking wish I could have on this iPad right now. But when we're talking about being able to take this thing on the go with me, to do everything I need to do. And then when I'm done, just take this iPad off of the magic keyboard and just like take this thing with me, go to the living room, watch the YouTube, go and procreate and, and illustrate something dope or go and just probably start making a beat on the couch. It's man, it's a no brainer that this is probably one of the dopest things you could do right now. With this thing, it's like, I can turn on my iPad, put Logic on quick, and it boots up so fast. My MacBook's slow as heck, and I got this thing at the same year. They're both the 2020 models of these products. So when I'm thinking about future and thinking about, man, I just want to take my iPad pencil and do what I got to do. Even automation is super dope in here too. So yeah, these are things that I think that have really made me solidify my decision to fully transition into the iPad pro for music production. Now listen up, I've made my decision, 100% going to the iPad Pro. Um, I've got my MacBook here, if anything ever, if anything ever, but um, I have no problem not looking at my MacBook at all and just making music solely on the iPad. You probably watching this video thinking, man, I need to know if I'm gonna do the same thing or whatnot. And these are the two reasons why I would say you should do it. Do it if you if you haven't invested thousands of dollars yet into any plug-in products for your MacBook, or if you don't have a MacBook at all. The second reason would be is if you're like me and you need something that you can take on trips, something that you can do on the go, something that you can easily take and, and do gigs with and like use it as your interface for any uh, events that you're performing at. This thing is a monster. It can do it. It can do a lot of things really good. And I'm just always weary of taking my MacBook to do certain things at events because it's not as easy as so many wires and things you got to do. Um, but for the iPad, I just take that headphone jack, plug that into whatever place I got to do, play my songs, whatever I got to do. And it's just super, super easy and intuitive. That's why I would do it. Let me know in the comments what you guys are gonna do. Are you guys switching to iPad for music production or are you guys just sticking with your MacBooks? I think that this is gonna be insane. If this is what the 1.0 version of Logic is for the iPad, man, I have high hopes for the future. And I think that a lot of people are gonna be switching to this thing. All right, I'll catch y'all in the next video. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe. It's only tonight, I don't want to waste it. If all I got is right now, then let me say this. I've been dreaming, I've been dreaming, I've been dreaming. I've been dreaming, I've been dreaming, I've been dreaming. I've been dreaming, I've been dreaming, I've been dreaming.
I've been dreaming, I've been dreaming, I've been dreaming.